Hi, I'm Zon the Daddy Dev. Welcome to Godot 3 for Beginners, Day 3. It's a course for beginners who want to learn Godot. Alright, so please say hi in the comments below so I know that you're alive. Give me feedback, hit like, subscribe, you know, hit the bell, all that stuff. Uh, I'm going to call this section Debug Mode. Again, debugging is when you fix things that you made mistakes and you're going to make tons of mistakes like me making these videos. So just really quickly, someone said hi and deleted their comment. I took a screenshot of it. I don't want to say hi back. I mean, thank you for saying hi if you're watching this again, but if you're shy for whatever reason and you deleted your hi comment, I don't think I should highlight you. But thanks again if you said hi. Hi. <laughs> and I also see feedback about last uh, video, specifically the vocabulary section I tried. Uh, Karma Labella uh, mentioned this. Your description of array is is kind of false. An array is a list of values, no more, no less. What you describe with the horizontal and vertical arrays in a two-dimensional array are a much more complicated topic. So ironically, I still understand arrays more in the sense of math and like arrays where they're x and y uh, rows and stuff like that. But that is more complicated. Lars from the School for Games, he's the the Dean of Engineering? I think he's the Dean of Engineering. Let me check. Um, yes, Dean of Engineering uh, has helped me out with some of like the understanding and definitions of the differences between arrays, so forth and so on. So why am I talking about that? What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to like put that in the section below. I'll put a timestamp so that if anyone wants to know more about the differences between arrays, between C sharp, so forth and so on. You can just look at the timestamp. It's going to be at the end of this video. Clicky click. So then I realized something. We should just follow the Godot docs and just kind of do this as a let's read because the Godot docs basically give us the vocabulary that we need in order to understand what we're doing. So that's what we're kind of going to do. Uh, this is going to be G3 docs, Godot doc, Godot 3 docs, SBS, step by step instancing. Let's just jump right the heck in. That's what we'll be learning today of stuff. Whoa, a little bit too far. I just kind of want to restart this whole thing. Uh, whoa, it's a little bit too hard. Uh, just a little quick note on the last thing we did about scenes, because so I said we'd do last video. And I was going in the scene manager, and I just made one little thing I did last time where I just like clicked on something to make it automatically help me pick the uh, scene. Again, and scene files are at TSCN. Also, I hope you like my little mouse. I changed my mouse to be like a head. And hopefully, is this recording? Let me double check really quick on OBS. Ooh, okay, yes, it is recording the mouse, so you should be able to see that. Again, to save time, I try to just do these as rough as I can. All right, anyway, let's go back. We're going to open up Casa, because I love Casa. My man. My inspiration. Truly, you don't know how well you've helped me. I'm filling in time while the program loads. Obviously. Ah, okay, here we go. Hello world. There it is right there. Again, um, TSCN. That's what you need to know if you can follow my little head. There I am. All right. TSCN are scene files, right? And so if we go to project and we go to project settings, we go to run, clicky click, we can find the TCN scene right there. And if I wanted to change the main scene, right, kind of reviewing, I could just like clear it and I could, you know, pick something else. Again, I'm going to pick TCN because that's the only scene and now I want it to be my main scene. That's very useful if you're a beginner to Godot 3. For me, I'm a beginner to Godot 3. I found it very helpful. Again, just in case you want to change the main scene. Quick quiz. What's the difference between a scene, number one, a scene, and number two, a main scene? Well, scene is just a scene, any scene. But the main scene, number two, is the first scene that will load all the game files. So you might want to think of it being like your user menu, so forth and so on. The game menu, whatever the heck you want your first scene, your first set of files to load. Save and new. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, we're going to close. All right. Why did it close? Because I should. We are finally now moving on to instancing as promised. All right, let's do this. This is actually pretty simple. Again, I'm going to zoom -y zoom in about nodes and parents. Again, a little bit of review because we're going to use that before, right? We have a node. It's a parent node. It's connected to children. You could consider this the master, as my dad taught me. Uh, this was the master, and these are the, the slaves. But luckily, we've changed it to parent and children because that's so much friendlier. 
All right, here we go. Once a scene has been saved, it can be instanced into another scene just as if uh, it were another node. That's pretty cool. So we have scene A as like a node, like a parent node, and then we have instancing scene B. Look at all the little dashes. In the picture, scene B uh, was added to a scene A as an instance. Instancing by example, to learn how instancing works, let's start by downloading a simple project file. You can click it right there, unzip the project file wherever you, anywhere you'd like, then open Godot and add this project to the manager, so forth and so on. So what I have done already is I've already added this, well, I'll download it a fourth time, why not? Because just the type of person I am. Show in folder, this is another review, files, right? Files, 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 the lifeblood of video games, lifeblood of software engineering is sorting your files, make sure they're sorted right. I can't stress that enough. It would have saved like two years of my life, maybe five, I don't know. Maybe I would have had my first game out already. Well, I, I've made like a real game commercial project, like a big game. If I had only known about files and how important they are. All right, I'm gonna extract all. And when again, I'm doing, cause I've already made files, right? Like good files and stuff. Is I'm gonna click my Godot 3 file folder thingy. Come on, open you up. All right, you can already see instancing there, but I'm just gonna do it for the sake of the video so you can see it. I'm gonna go extract, it's gonna say replace, sure. I'm just gonna replace all the files, doesn't matter to me. Okay, so now that we've got that downloaded, we need to import the file. And hopefully I can just import it again one more time without it being weird so you can see it, how to import stuff. You wanna hit the import button. Uh, actually, let's delete this one. Can we delete? Oh, okay, I'm gonna remove. <laughs> Don't, you won't have to do this because the file won't be in there, but here you go. I'm going to import the file. I'm going to browse, look through my documents. going to look for Godot 3. Again, see, I've memorized my file names. Things make sense. going to click that instancing file folder. Hit project.godot. And boomy boom, boomy boom. Press import and edit. All right, now we just wait. Again, engine coin. All right, this is pretty cool. Now, why, so when you look at the tutorial, just off the bat, this is, one, this is one reason I'm glad I'm doing these videos. And you see this and you're like, eh, what is all this? You're just like, eh, I don't know, eh, right? Okay, and we are gonna do all this. Let me scroll back up. It doesn't tell you how easy this thing is and how complete this thing is. So I can literally just like hit the play button and stuff already happens, which is cool. Like watch this. Instancing, instancing, ah, oh, instancing, ah, oh, instancing. Yes, look at that. Oh, it's already ready. I don't know. I don't know if I could, I could turn this into a game and asset flip it for a game jam. Again, joking aside, I kind of want people who are following this to do that um, as practice to get on itch.io. Uh, and again, I'll have to tell my friend that you'd be doing this for his meta game jam. But wow, I don't know how you can make this meta. That would be a challenge and a $5 prize to anyone who says hi in the comments and does the meta game jam assets flip this in a unique way that fits the criteria for the game jam. You could win five bucks because I'm just that kind of guy. All right, let's see right here. I'm going to move this down. Uh, okay, so now that I've shown you how cool that is and actually works, how can we start messing with it? Because nothing beats messing with it. Am I recording? I hope I'm recording. Yes, I am. That'd be kind of bad if I wasn't. I started talking this entire time. All right, let's see. Instincts by example, I've done all that. We've reimported it. <sighs> Browser file, yes, did all that. What do we have here? This project contains two scenes, ball, T, S, C, N. Again, that's the scene file. Uh, main, T, 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 S, C, N. I wish I, I should look up what that stands for. Uh, that'd be just nice to know, right? The body, the ball scene uses a rig, rigid body 2D to provide physics behavior, while the main scene has a set of obstacles for the ball to collide with using static body 2D. Okay. I'm going to click on these really quick. Uh, I don't know. Should we? I didn't click on it last time. Yikes. Okay. All right. Yes. Again, this is what I mean. Like, do we don't need to look at all this right now. At least we know it's there if we need it. Let's just keep going. All right. What am I, what are they doing here? Something about clicking on this. Okay. Oh, it's just showing click. And then you can see here, rigid body, so forth and so on. Let's do that in program. Holy macro. Where is it? <gasps> 
Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I gotta click on, I see, how cool is this? Okay, so I click on the ball TCN and I get the ball scene. This is where the ball is. And so, wow, this is so cool. Like, this is so cool. Like you do something and you just realize stuff. So that's what they're talking about here. Like scene A is instancing, scene B. So in this case, I, I would, let's see, what's our first scene that loaded? Main Tish should be scene A, okay? I, please stop me, someone on the internet, if I'm wrong. So let's say Main Tish is scene A. And what happens in here, if Main Tish is scene A, then the ball uh, Tish, I, you know, TSCN scene is being instanced in as scene B. That is pretty cool to know. I'm sorry, I'm just... I do know. I mean, I've, I've figured something out. I hope anyone watching this has figured the same thing I figured out. All right. Okay. Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Then open the main scene and then select the root node. Okay. So main scene. Drew, let's see. Main scene. This is the root node wall container, right? Fantastic. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's check to see if well, it's got to be scene A because it says main tish, main scene. But we could just check really quick. We'll go to project Go to project settings, go to run, and whoa, dude, yeah, it's main tish. That's the main scene. Fantastic. Just want to double check that. Nice. Okay, so internet, you don't have to stop me. Looks like I'm right on this one. All right, okay, and I got the balls. What do we do with balls? That's a bad window. It wants us to do what? Just select the root node. Okay, did that. We want to add an instance of the ball scene as a child main. Uh-oh, getting complicated. Click the link shaped button. Its hover text says instance a scene file as a node and select the ball tish file. Uh -huh. Anyway, double check. We want to add an instance of the ball. Okay, scene as a child of the main. So it's, it's not set up that way yet. Click the link shaped button. It's hover text instance scene file as node and select the ball tish file. Click the link shaped. Oh, okay. See a link right there. All right. Let's see. Here, I'll click that link. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Click the link. And then I'll click ball tish. Sure. All right. Now it's a node in there. All right. Okay. What does that mean? The ball we placed in the top corner of the screen. Oh, was it? Yeah. Son of a gun. Yeah, it was. Nice. It's placed on the top corner of the screen. All right. What else? Uh,. This is zero, 0 in scene coordinates. Click and drag the ball somewhere near the top of the screen. Got it. Done that. Uh, press play and watch the ball fall to the bottom of the scene. Like I said, we're just following the docs, guys. Click, click. All right. I'm sure we see some balls falling. Oh, God. That's so... It's so beautiful. I just... I love that. Like... And then I can still do this. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It doesn't say why. I can just take the mouse and, and pop a bunch of balls. But anyway... Anyway... Coming back to what we're supposed to be doing. Multiple instances. Yeah, you can add as many instances you like to the scene, either by using the instance button again or by clicking on the ball instance and pressing duplicate D. Ooh, we got a shortcut. Mm. All right, let's try this shortcut really quickly then. Control D. Nope. Uh, what the heck, dude? Uh-oh. Oh, no, I did. I did do it. Oh, interesting. So when you press Control D... It's going to just copy in the last coordinate. That's cool. We're learning things, guys. We learned a shortcut. Guys, gals, even though a majority of my viewers are men, males, I'm cool with that. Hopefully, we'll get more females here. There are fem female game developers. All right, here, okay, let's see. Did that, all right. Run this scene again and watch the balls fall. Absolute beginners, guys. Absolute beginners. Nothing wrong with that. I'm one of you. The blind leading the blind. Oh, can we do it again? I wish there's a way we could just like hit like a, a program, a button, so we can just keep seeing this over and over again. Isn't that beautiful? That is so beautiful. All right, I'm going to put some more of these. I'm going to move them right here. Actually, can I move them off the camera? Dude, let's move them off the camera. Can we move them out of the scene? I don't. Let's see if that works. A little bit of experimentation. All right, play. Oh, it does. Oh. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's get ridiculous. How far can I go? Go like take this all the way up there. <gasps> all the way up there. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see. Let's let's get it a little bit more dynamic. Dramatic, I should say. A little bit more dramatic. Okay, here we go. Play. 
Oh, where's the last one? Oh, there it goes. Oh, whoa. whoa. Oh, that's that's lovely. All right. Okay, let's see. Go back to our GD Docs. Uh, nice. Oh, did they animate that? That's really cool. It's, it was animated. Oh, that's nice. I didn't realize. Editing instances. Open the ball scene. Change the bounce. Set the bounce factor to 0 0.5 to 1. So again, like just I, I know that this clears it out clears it up if you see it here this is the one thing they want you to find it it took me a little time to find it though myself so that's why we're doing the videos again right to make this as clear as it can be to beginners such as myself such as you guys starting with this whole thingy thing all right so i click it on like okay say i don't click it okay now i click it all right i go down here and i just look for bounce and there it is and i'm going to put bounce of it said one i say we go two Damn it, it only made it go, <laughs> it can only go up to one. What? Hold on, can it go 20? No, it can, it's limited. It's, why is it limited? No, it will only let me go to the bounce of one. That's good to know. So it's set to one. I don't know how I could break that, but it's just it's set to one. So let's see what happens. We'll press play. Boink, 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 boink. Pressing play. Whoa, what the, oh because I'm on the wrong scene. Let's go back to main tish, main scene. Play it, let's see what happens with a, with a one bounce. Can't get full screen. Wah. Oh. <laughs> oh God, God knows where that goes. You know, the funny thing is, is that there isn't an erase on, whoa. There isn't an erase on this. So every one of these uh, Insta balls, let's call them Insta balls, is taking up memory in the computer. Let's see, is my, is my baby overheating? It's it's a little warm. That could be because of all everything else, but uh, just something to note. All right, okay, let's see. Okay, and then that's it. Nothing that that a gray revert button appears next to the adjusted properties. When this button is pre pressed, it means you modified a property in the instances scene to override its value. No problem. Save scene. Even if that property is modified to the original scene, the custom value will remain. Pressing the revert button will store the property to the value in the save scene. So let's check really quick. Like um. I guess uh, I can't see it here, right? Is that what it's kind of saying? No, I can't see it here. And yeah, it's changed, right? The ball, so by changing it in this scene, in t uh, ball tish, all the instances in the main scene of the of the ball have also been changed. That's what it's saying. That's pretty clear and that's pretty easy, guys. Oh, uh, alrighty, right. Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut it from here for time. I wanna kind of make these shorter more easily easily digestible and I also want to give um, me and Lars a little bit more time to make sure what we say about I'm gonna say this again I want to make sure what I post from what he what he gives me is like you know is 100% what he's want, wants wants to say I now understand much better thanks to Karma Labella the uh, you know uh, nations and definitely Lars for filling me in more on how to explain arrays, not just as, you know, as the uh, two-dimensional arrays or three-dimensional arrays as I learned it, but as a array in uh, language terms, like computer programming language terms. All right. Okay. That's about all it for, that's about it for now. Again, uh, tomorrow we will start back with instancing. We'll do the wrap up right here. Should go by really quickly because I've done it before. Uh, and then we're going to be jumping into actual scripting and talking about scripting. So that's where I want to end up tomorrow. Insert catchy phrase here. Hope to see you guys tomorrow. Say hi in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button so that I know you're alive and you want more. And that we can continue this course. Alrighty. See you later. Bye.